On behalf of Brigadier General Doug Jackson, today's presiding officer, welcome to the change of command ceremony for the 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group. I am Captain Casey Pevliquin, your narrator for today's ceremony. The 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group would like to recognize several distinguished guests who are present today. Deputy Commander, 379th Air Expeditionary Wing, Colonel Matt Clausen. Command Chief, 379th Air Expeditionary Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Matt King. <laughs> Additionally, we welcome all commanders, senior enlisted leaders, first sergeants, and especially the men and women of the 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group. In a few moments, we will begin the ceremony during which Colonel David Mays will relinquish command to Colonel Jeff Mrazek. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party, the playing of ruffle and flourishes, and remain standing for the posting of the colors, singing of the national anthem by Tech Sergeant Andrew Velez Christian, and invocation by Chaplain John McKay. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we washed were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Or oh, the land of the free and the home of the
Join me in prayer as I pray in my tradition. You may pray in yours. Almighty and ever-present God, we come together today for this special occasion as the 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group changes commanders. We come with confidence in knowing you are a God of order and not of chaos. And we acknowledge we are here to serve in positions for a season in your great order. Today we give thanks for the amazing leadership Colonel Davis has provided over his time as commander. We are also grateful for his influence and courage that has continued to move the group forward. We pray your continued watch over him as he continues in his new role. We also come today lifting up Colonel Morazic as he assumes command today. May he seek you as he visions for the group and grant him wisdom as he begins this new role. We also lift up the airmen who make up the 379th Expeditionary Air Group. As we come, we also lift up our nation and world, and we pray for your peace. Keep us safe and put your hedge of protection around us. Go with us and be with us, and we pray that others can see you through the lives that we live. It is in your most holy name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you to the Honor Guard, Tech Sergeant Velez Christian, and Chaplain McKay. It is my pleasure to present to you today's presiding officer, the commander of the 379th Air Expeditionary Wing, Brigadier General Doug Jackson. Good afternoon. It is a beautiful day here at the epicenter. And not just because the sun is shining and there's a faint smell of petrichor in the air. No, today is spectacular because we get to honor a superb organization and hail and farewell the two leaders who are about to exchange the responsibility for leading it. As I begin, I'd like to thank the awesome airmen of the 379th EABG and all of Team AUEB who organized and executed this ceremony. In absentia, I also thank the Mays and Mrazic families in Ocean Springs, Mississippi and MacDill Air Force Base, Florida, respectively. Thanks to both for your love and support. A warm welcome as well to my partners in SLAR and the third Shatner, our command chief, Matt King, and Deputy Commander Colonel Matt Clausen, as well as the fantastic group and squadron leadership teams representing their units at today's ceremony. Finally, I welcome all the service members and teammates of Team AUAB who are joining us on this special occasion. Now, lest we violate our wing's tendency toward brevity and become loquacious, let's proceed with our task at hand to transition the mantle of command of the 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group from Colonel Dave Mays to Colonel Jeff Mrazek. Dave joined our team in July 2023 and made an immediate and positive impact. As the final member of our senior executive cohort, Dave's arrival hastened our establishment of a new culture and climate at the Air Force's largest and most indispensable air expeditionary wing. Fueled by Dave's energy and passion, we instilled an outward mindset focused on relationships, empowerment, trust, and positive attribution. A wing that had always been effective suddenly became supercharged as we reinvigorated our commitment to teamwork collaboration and community. Achievements, many of which were highlighted in Colonel Mays' Legion of Merit citation that we read at the activation of the EABG, began to accumulate. Record-breaking maintenance and operations effectiveness. Historic lows for disciplinary issues and complaints. AFSENT's most exquisite and prolific organization for agile combat employment to include in support of emergent combat operations, 
Air Combat Command awards and recognition for our Expeditionary Contracting Squadron, as well as our Expeditionary Civil Engineer Squadron and our Expeditionary Medical Group, now a squadron of the mighty EABG. All these successes were attained simultaneous to our internal planning to transition this wing away from the traditional structure which we, which, which we have flourished since 2002 to the new AFRGEN model, where the responsibility of four groups would be collectively vested in our new supergroup, the 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group, which Colonel Mays has so deftly led. As we highlight Dave's myriad accomplishments, we must also acknowledge the brilliant teammates and partners who shared in those achievements. Remarkable and now graduated group commanders and senior enlisted leaders. Inimitable squadron commanders, SELs, and first sergeants, both past and present. And most importantly, thousands of courageous, bold, and unflappable airmen who donned the Triangle K under Colonel Mays's sage leadership. Many of the folks Colonel Mays and his team have led couldn't have known the challenges they would face within days of their arrival to Al Yadid. Yet they performed extraordinarily through momentous turmoil. As you all well know, this region could have fallen into mass conflagration after October 7th, but instead, largely due to the dedication and professionalism of the airmen of the 379th EABG, relative calm endures. But as we all know, in the military, leaders like seasons and styles and hair colors inevitably change. A commander, <laughs> a commander who served in the precise manner that was needed at that exact moment invariably surrenders the guide on to the next leader, shaped and seasoned to be the commander the organization now needs to generate combat air power. We temper our sadness through anticipation for more remarkable achievement to come. The leader we need right now, Colonel Jeff Mrazek, is ready to accept the mantle of command. And I have no doubt that the 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group will continue to excel. Jeff joins us from the 6th Operations Group at MacDill Air Force Base, where like Colonel Mays, he took command in July 2023. An operator by trade, Colonel Mrazek is ideally prepared for this next challenge, as he has previously commanded here at the epicenter from 2015 through 2016, through the height of our coalition's fight to defeat ISIS, a campaign that still continues and is supported by combat air power at this wing to this very day. Colonel Mrazek's resume is an impressive one a School of Advanced Air and Space Studies graduate, a joint and coalition warfighter, and, like the distinguished leader whom he replaces, a doctor. Although, for goodness sake, if you get a sports hernia, I do not recommend going to Dr. Mays or Dr. Mrazek. Please go to our award-winning Expeditionary Medical Squadron. The bottom line is Colonel Mrazek, like Colonel Mays before him, is the perfect person to command this superb organization at the exact moment we need his combat experience and his visionary leadership. I'm honored to welcome Jeff to our award-winning team and our even more powerful culture. Colonel Mrazek, go fast, be bold, I trust you. With that, let's proceed with our transition. May God bless each and every one of you and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Brigadier General Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group, Colonel David Mays. D 
just for the record, I got here in June, so it makes me feel better knowing I got here in June. Gerald Jackson, Colonel Clawson, Chief King, fellow 06s, Squadron Commanders, Chiefs, SELs, First Sergeant Supervisors, members of Team AUAB, and especially the members of the 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group. Thank you for being here today, joining us in this ceremony. I'd like to thank our project officer, Captain Carter, Lieutenant Colonel McKay, Captain Pelican, who's uh, getting tuned up. This is his uh, second one, so uh, I appreciate it. Uh, Tech Sergeant Velez, where are you at? He's back there in the back with his hand. Hey, uh, great rendition of the uh, uh, national anthem. Uh, That's your uh, third uh, change of command in a row. Uh, it sounds awesome, sounds great, and uh, I appreciate it. Honor Guard team protocol and our great DV catering team uh, who has uh, prepared uh, a, a great feast after this. Uh, so uh, please make sure you get uh, some food or take a plate to go. Uh, uh, thanks for making this a, a successful event today. I'd like to thank uh, Lieutenant Colonel Sandoval, where are you at? Oh, he's over here. Uh, our EABG Deputy Group Commander, uh, for all your hard work, uh, for all the change of command, you kind of hit the, the, the ground running. Uh, I didn't have anybody else to go to because everybody was changing out, uh, whether it's their command teams, leadership teams, or their whole squadron. So uh, thank you for everything you've done. I appreciate it. Uh, I have a lot of people to thank for uh, this great opportunity of being a group commander here at LUD. I'd like to thank uh, General Jackson, Colonel Clawson, Chief King uh, for the opportunity to command and uh, the deactivated uh, MSG, uh, which is uh, now the old uh, group, obviously, uh, and then uh, trans transitioning it to uh, the new expeditionary air base group. Uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity. Uh, as uh, the general mentioned, uh, Afrogen provided the instructions to deactivate the group and uh, form a new group, the EABG. Although the instructions were simple, the hours spent on how to move squadrons, reallocate duties, and figure out how this new EABG is going to work uh, has been a great task. Uh, going from six squadrons to nine squadrons, encompassing uh, over 2,500 total personnel and uh, billions in assets has been fun, interesting, and challenging. Major organizational changes like this don't happen overnight. Uh, like the general said, I'd like to thank the former uh, group commanders. We've got two uh, old school guys in, in the uh, second row down here. Uh, all the chiefs, uh, EABG squadron commanders, uh, and the SELs uh, and chiefs that uh, were a part of that, uh, thank you. Uh, Jeff, uh, welcome to LUD again. And as the boss said, you're here as the uh, 340th Expeditionary Air Refueling Squadron Commander uh, back in 2015-2016. Uh, uh, having to be digging around the office, uh, trying to clean it out, uh, getting ready uh, for the changeover, and I found uh, your pamphlet from 2015-2016. So I uh, got the dust off of it and uh, gave it to him when he got here, uh, just as a, a reminder. So, uh, with uh, you know, as a sitting group commander at McDill, and uh, you know, all your McDill connections here as a lead wing, uh, we think uh, the EABG will be in safe hands. Uh, good luck and Godspeed. Uh, lastly, just want to thank the entire 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group for their dedication, selfless service, and unwavering commitment to, mis to our mission of generating combat air power. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Mays. The American Change of Command Ceremony is a military tradition deeply rooted in history dating back to 3 July 1775 when General George Washington drew his sword under an elm tree in Cambridge, Massachusetts to assume command of the Continental Army. During the American Revolution, military units carried distinctive flags designed to match the color of their uniforms and emblazoned with a motto selected by the commander. When soldiers followed their leader into battle, this flag provided a highly visible point around which members of the unit could rally during the pandemonium of battle. Because of its importance, the flag was used in the Continental Army's earliest change of command ceremonies. The organization's banner was exchanged in full view, so every soldier could see the officer now entrusted to lead them into battle. The modern ceremony you see today is rooted in this military tradition and symbolizes the passing of command so all may witness the changing of leadership responsibilities. Please stand now for the official change of command ceremony. Publish the order. Attention to orders. 
Under the provision of the Air Force Instruction 51-604 and Special Order Number Gulf Sierra-24016, Colonel Jeff Mrazek assumes command of the 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group from Colonel David Mays, effective 19 April 2024, by order of Brigadier General Jackson, 379th Air Expeditionary Wing, Commander, Al Udid Air Base, Cutter. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce for the first time the 379th Expeditionary Air Base Group Commander, Colonel Jeff Mrazek. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being here. I'll echo Dave's comments. Uh, the first part is gonna be a bunch of thank yous. General Jackson, of course, and uh, that doctor comment is true, not medical doctor, just, just so you know. Uh, Matt, Chief, uh, colonels, commanders, chiefs, SEL shirts, especially our chief and our shirt here in the in the EABG, fantastic uh, teammates, and especially uh, men and women of the 379th EABG. Thanks for being here today. Thanks uh, to Captain Carter, uh, Chef McKay, uh, Casey, Tech Sergeant Velez, Honor Guard, uh, Protocol, and thanks in advance to the uh, DB. Canary team who we're going to meet here shortly, and uh, of course, thanks to uh, Public Affairs for, uh, for being here. Also, definitely I thank Brandon. Uh, Colonel Sandoval came out here a few weeks early, really making this transition smooth uh, to the point where he picked up those chairs in his pickup truck on the way here, so he's done doing it all. Uh, uh, special thanks, of course, to our uh, group commanders, uh, or former group commanders, so Justin, Cisco, Chris, Cisco obviously are already uh, out of here. And then Dave, but thanks for your leadership and thanks for your friendship. Uh, ever since you came up for the PDS in December, it's been uh, fantastic, much, much appreciated. And I can't possibly forget to thank my family back in Massachusetts, Virginia, and my wife and kiddos back at McDill. So uh, Candace, Joseph, Zachary, David, Sophie, uh, you're all awesome and I love you. And thanks all to uh, God for who makes all good things possible. So two brief thoughts uh, before Friday snacks. Uh, why we're here and making it better. So first, why we're here, generate combat air power. So we can never take our eye off that ball. That's what we're here for, that's our mission, generating combat air power. Every single one of us sitting in this room and everyone out here within the wire and outside the wire uh, is here to work as a team to contribute to that mission. But it's not just about doing the mission, it's about making the mission better and making it better step by step by step, and that's part of our job. So when I first arrived at LED more than 20 years ago, uh, like 22, I think it was, years ago, so we lived absolutely packed into tents, like you could touch your roommates, because uh, you're on cots. Uh, we didn't have any running water. We only had one runway. We had pretty limited ramp space, and this was not really a, uh, a base in fighting condition. Back by uh, 2003, we had ISR here, we had tankers, we had Strike Eagles, and we were coming home bingo and Winchester every single night from hitting Iraq in early 2003. It was pretty, uh, pretty wild, pretty wild stuff. And then we got some better tents, then we got trailers, then we got double stack trailers, we got hardened shower buildings. Uh, more importantly, we got two runways, then we got more ramps. And so by the time coming back, you know, 10 years later in 2015, I actually came back a couple times in between there too, not, not counting those. But uh, we had, for Iraq and Syria, for that uh, initial uh, kind of ISIS, uh, we had B1s here, we had B52s, we had ISR, we had as many as 70 tankers executing combat, uh, combat missions every single night. And those, uh, those bones were coming back Winchester as well, which is really, really impressive. So it didn't happen like that overnight though. 
that that transition took you know took half a uh, took you know a decade and a half to get there. And so now roll it on. We're able to execute the Afghan evacuation from here, and now we're ready for the current fight as as it stands. But you could saw see that bit by bit by bit, every airman in their rotation made this place better. And right now, that's our turn. Right now, it's our turn to do that. We're going to take this ball and move it further forward and get it ready for uh, whatever the next next conflict brings, or hopefully the next conflict we can deter if we can uh, do it even better. So I'm going to ask for one more thing, too. And while we're making our air base more capable and better ready to combat, uh, generate combat air power, I'm going to ask you to make yourself better. So whether it's uh, your faith, whether it's school, whether it's fitness, really whatever it is, six months is enough time to change something in your life and really get ahead on something. So pick that right now while you're sitting in those seats and think about what the next six months is going to bring for you because as I get to know everybody over the next six months, there's two things I'm going to be asking everybody is what are you doing to make the mission better and what are you doing to make yourself better and really going to, to try to have those conversations. But we don't have six months to talk about it. We have six months to do it. So, closing, let's go. Thanks. Thank you, Colonel Morazic. Please stand for the playing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for your attendance. Please join us at the Fox Kitchen for foods, snacks, and refreshments as we congratulate the new Expeditionary Air Base Group Commander. <laughs>